Okay, now we're going to work backwards a little bit. I showed you those implemented inline. Now I'm going to show you those same things as separate files. Um, there's a couple of things. There's a, a global CMS handle that's defined. Um, and this is something that uh, is particularly useful for testing uh, for security purposes. That way you can see if somebody has called your module include file directly in their browser or with a script or if they're doing it properly through the CMS. Uh, there's other variables that are predefined based on what method we're talking about. And we'll, we'll see more of that as we go on. So here's a, a typical method install.php. These all sit in the top level of the module directory. Uh, so we test to see that that handle exists. If not, we just fail. You could produce an error message. You could do whatever you want, really. Uh, here's another new function. We're creating a preference. Use a random phrase, and the default value is yes. Um, we'll get back to that later. Uh, and then we're doing the same thing. We're writing an entry in the admin log. Our method upgrade, similarly, uh, you know, we, we test the global handle. And then we have a, a big switch statement. And this is typically what, how this happens, is you test for a version. And since our original version didn't have this preference, if, we're, if our old version uh, is the previous version, then we create the preference. And, and you just cascade all of these uh, different, op, uh, different versions in this switch statement. So what that means is if somebody, if, if we're at version 5 and we've created all these different cases, somebody who has version 0.0.0.1 can upgrade directly to 5 because it'll just go down that list and do each of those upgrades. Uh, so it, it's really helpful and it makes it an easy process. Uh, again, we're writing <coughs> our module. And for uninstall. Um, Here's that, we created that preference, this time we're removing it. In subsequent versions, I believe that happens automatically, or I, I know it was discussed, um, but even in any case, it's, it's good housekeeping, just clean up everything that you created. Okay, so we've, we've done this and we go to our extensions and we see it needs an upgrade, uh, so that, you know, you, the uh, user clicks on upgrade, it goes through our script, and then we have our new version. Uh, do action can also be split into multiple files. And this is actually a really good idea because it keeps the memory footprint a lot smaller. Modules can get huge and complicated, as I'm sure you're aware. And the way PHP works is it reads in every file that it needs to uh, into memory, parses it. So if you've got a huge collection of functions that you only use on one particular action of your module, it's a real waste to bring that in every time. So by splitting out the action, it reduces the amount of stuff that has to be read, it improves performance. Uh, these split out functions uh, are called action, and then the name of the action, .php. Uh, and there's also preset variables that come to these, uh, the global CMS handle, uh, they have the ID params and return ID, and we'll talk more about those. It has Smarty defined, which saves you a few characters of typing uh, when you want to reference that. So our action default, uh, now, again, this, this method is sitting in the main module. It probably would have been smarter to pull it out and put it into this particular uh, action file. But what we're doing is we're checking uh, then we're calling our hello function. Uh, similarly, the goodbye does the same thing. It would be smarter to take those methods out of the main module and put them in the action file, unless it's called by multiple actions, in which case you want to leave it in the central module file. OK, so we load it again, and here we go. But you might notice something. We only have one of our messages at this point. So the question is, where was our hello? The thing is, the action hello is not the same as the default action. Uh, we, we called our, our file uh, action, oh, I did call it action default. I did, that was actually action hello. Sorry. In any case, the way we solve that problem is by calling it action default <laughs> uh, or creating an action hello uh, or changing the model so uh, that all works out. 
Okay, so another time to take a deep breath. We're keeping track of module versions. Uh, we're uh, having a clean approach to upgrades, to installs, to uh, removal of modules. Uh, we're doing better memory management because we've broken uh, these methods out into separate files. Uh, and then we've done some other interesting things like created a preference, written to the admin log, useful kinds of things like that. And of course, every time we take a deep breath, we run into trouble. 16 people file feature requests. I want to be able to fill in my own messages. And hey, if you have this preference established for randomly picking a phrase, you ought to use it for something. So this brings up the database. Um, the handle to the database is available via the getDB method. This supports all of the ADODB uh, functionality, uh, which is a database, database abstraction layer. And here's uh, a link to the documentation, which is a very cluttered documentation and a little bit difficult to access, but it's quite complete. And you'll find it's really very helpful. So we're blowing out our install method, and this is getting pretty big. First thing we do is we get a handle to our database. Um, you can pass options <coughs> on table creation, and one of the typical ones is if you're using MySQL, you can specify what kind of tables to create. MySQL has uh, InnoDB, and it has ISAM, and you can choose which one you want. If you're using a different database, uh, Postgres will ignore this. Uh, but you can pass options if you choose. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a data, uh, a table in a database independent fashion. So we create a new data dictionary, and then we pass it, this is our schema. So we're going to pass it a phrase ID, uh, which is an integer. It's the primary key to this table, and it auto increments. Uh, and the phrase is a character up to 255 uh, characters, uh, glyphs. Uh, and that's not only platform independent, but it is um, multilingual compatible. Uh, and this is a lot simpler than figuring out, well, I'm using Postgres, so I have to use varchar2, or MySQL, I'm using a varchar. Um, and at that link I showed you before, they have a list of all the different types, and the, the library automatically builds the correct kind of table, which is, is very helpful. So we create our our table using this. Now, when you install the CMS, you know you get to choose the prefix for your database. Uh, as a module designer, you don't want to make the assumption, most people leave it as the default CMS underscore, but you can't make that assumption. So this, this function returns what that prefix is, and then you can concatenate on the name of your table. It's helpful to have your module name as part of your table name, just so that other modules don't clash. Uh, it makes for long table names, but it also makes it easier to keep track of what you're doing. Uh, so we create that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert the, our, our language string as the initial value. So again, we create an insert statement. We're using the prefix. We're, uh, we're only pasting in the phrase because our key is auto-incrementing. And there's this funny thing here, values Question mark. Now this is another very powerful feature and it's very important, uh, which is the ADODB library has uh, SQL sanitation. Uh, if a, beginning, a typical beginning programming error is you just, uh, instead of putting a question mark and passing it in as a parameter, uh, you just concatenate a string. And the next thing you do is, oh well this is coming from a user input, so we just put the parameter there. And it, it works, it's, it's fine, until somebody who's trying to break into your site comes up with a string that when you pass it to the database, does something like, oh, you know, drops a table, sends the user file to uh, the screen. It, 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 um, so to prevent SQL injection attacks, what you do is you use a, a question mark for every parameter, and then you pass an array with your values, <coughs> and then ADODB will escape that specific to the database you're using, so you don't have to think of all the possible SQL injection attacks. So that's, that's an important one. We'll mention that again 